All right, so the historic UFC 300 goes down in just a few days. And if you're thinking of putting a bet on and you want to know who to bet on, okay, I'm going to tell you who's going to win these fights. I'm going to take you through the main card and I'm going to give you some predictions. Listen, I'm a Hall of Famer. You can see the, you can see the statue. I was a world champion. Okay, I had the most fights in the organization. So I know a thing or two about mixed martial arts. UFC 300, ridiculous event from top to bottom. So without further ado, let's get started on that main card, okay? Opening up the main card, it is Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel taking on Cody Brundage. Now, Bo Nickel, as we know, this man is a phenomenal wrestler. One of the very best to do it. And when you speak to him, he uses confidence. But that's only because the man knows his ability. It's as simple as that, okay? He was literally bred from this since a little tiny kid, about seven years old. He's been on the wrestling mats, wrestling in front of 30, 40,000 people at a time. He knows how to deal with the drama. He knows how to deal with the big crowds, the big fight fields, and all the rest of it. You name it, Bo Nickel is that man. And we saw last time against Val Woodburn when he took him out in 38 seconds. Did it with the hands. The man's always working, always improving. Of course, going up against Cody Brundage. Cody Brundage is a great fighter. He's big, he's strong, and the man can wrestle himself. Let's remember last time out against Zachary Reese, he won that fight by picking up Zachary Reese, slamming him on his head, and then finishing him with punches. However, he's outmatched. Simple as that. I believe there's a reason why Bo Nickel is opening up the main card. It's because the UFC think they have got a potential champion on their hands and an absolute superstar. When he walked out to the T-Mobile Arena last July, the place went absolutely crazy, which is crazy for somebody only having their second ever UFC fight. Five and all, two knockouts, three submissions, and I believe this will be another submission, okay? So Bo Nickel gets the job done, keeps improving, keeps working towards being a superstar, and the hype train does not stop right now. Then we move on. Right, this fight now, I think, will be fight of the night. Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sarukian. Two phenomenal fighters. So highly decorated and technical in every single area, right? Charles Oliveira has the most finishes. He has the most bonuses. He has the most submissions. And he is the most exciting fighter in all of mixed martial arts. That's because he doesn't care. He just walks forward like an absolute buzzsaw. Doesn't care what's coming back. He's got great striking, great Muay Thai, knees and elbows in the clinch, good takedowns for a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu specialist, and if it hits the floor, man, you are in a world of shit. It's as simple as that. But Armin Sarukian, Armin Sarukian, this man took Islam Makachev three rounds, gave him a competitive fight on very short notice. Ever since then, this man's had a bee in his bonnet about getting his hands on Islam Makachev once again. When I fought first time with Islam Makachev, you gave me three weeks. If you're gonna give me eight weeks, I'm gonna smash him. And he just might get a chance to do that. This is apparently the number one contender fight. Whoever wins this fight will get to fight Islam Makachev next. We don't know if that's a fight. That was stated. That was rumored. That was meant to be, okay? But there's Dustin Poirier and there's Justin Gagey. We'll get to him next. But last time we saw Armistar Rukin against Benil Dariush, what a finish. One minute, four seconds, flying knee to a punch. That was it. Who wins? Listen, I love Charles Oliveira. Dubrox, what an inspirational story. What he's been through since a little kid. He was told he wouldn't be able to walk, let alone compete at the highest level and be a champion in the UFC and a man with almost all the records to his name. But I think Armin Sarukian has the ability to do what Islam Makachev did, okay? Now, granted, Charles, as I said, walks forward. He's reckless, he's got power, and he's not scared of anybody. But I do think that he does make mistakes sometimes because he is so reckless. Islam took him down, beat him at his own game, choked him out. I think Armin Sarukian has the ability to do that, to take him down, yes, to compete with him on the feet, yes. Is he a better wrestler? Yes. Can he nullify the jiu-jitsu on the ground? Yes. Let's remember people like Paul Felder, the Irish Dragon, an incredible fighter, um, beat Charles Oliveira by staying in his guard, closing him down, and just smashing him with elbows. So, Charles Oliveira is one of my very favorite fighters. I love watching this fight, and it breaks my heart to say, I think he's going to lose this one. I believe Armin Sarukian is the next guy. All right, today's video is sponsored by Premier Fight Picks, which is owned and operated by top combat sports better and analyst Bordia Helmi. Bordia has an all-time 70% strike rate, publicly tracked over five years. Bordia has been on a roll, profiting out of 21 out of the last 27 UFC events, including the last five pay-per-views in a row. So if you want to bet on fights and you're looking for help picking winners, visit PremierFightPicks.com. With the historic and monumental UFC 300 this weekend, the 
four more cards scheduled throughout the next month, this is the perfect time to sign up. Body is offering weekly, monthly, and yearly subscriptions to get you in on the best bets, quick picks, and analysis. There are currently several bets posted for UFC 300, including big parlays, underdogs, props, with a huge play on the highly anticipated main event between Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill. And in addition, there is already a future bet posted for this month's UFC fight night, Nicolau versus Perez. Sign up now to view all of that content and more. Lastly, give Bardia a follow on Instagram at Premier Fight Picks and on X at PFP Handicapping for access to free bets, analysis, and fight breakdowns. Anyway, moving on to the BMF title, the baddest mother right? Samuel L. Jackson is the one that says bad motherfucker. The one that says bad motherfucker. Love that film, Pulp Fiction. Let's go. So, Justin Gagey, a bad man himself, okay? And he is officially the BMF title holder, okay? Knocked out Dustin Poirier. What a head kick that was. We know about the power. We know about his reluctancy to use his wrestling game, which is very, very good. He uses that to keep fights on the feet. He's got beautiful boxing and he's getting better all the time. Justin Gage is a phenomenal fighter. He is as tough as they come and as exciting as they come. That's a fact. That's why they call him the human highlight reel. He's going up against Maxi Baby. Bless, right? The one and only, the former featherweight king who defended the belt three times, if I'm not mistaken. He has fought at 155 before, and that was exactly five years to the date, okay? April 13, 2019, went up against Dustin Poirier. Didn't get the job done, but had some success. These men are the same size, 5'11". They have pretty much the exact same reach, and they both operate on the feet. Their strikers just engage, he just hits harder. Max Holloway's faster, and I can see a path to victory. Dancing around a lot, using the jab, one, two, sticking and moving, all the rest of it. But I do believe that Justin Gage is going to piece up those legs. He's going to punish him with leg kicks. He's going to slow down the movement. And when he slows down the movement, he's going to be able to back him up against the fence. And I think it's going to be a tough night for Max Holloway. I have so much respect for Max Holloway. He's an incredible fighter. And the balls on this kid to go and do this, to move up to 155 and take on this man because he wants to beat Justin Gage. And then he wants to fight Islam Makachev. There's a lot of fights that can be there for us, you know, and one of them being the, the 55 champ, which I think would be a fun one. As I said, lofty goals. And the man is an absolute warrior. But I don't think he beats Justin Gage. Even though Justin Gagey says, I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm, I'm an unprofessional commentator. But I'm probably as biased as the judges. Certainly not as biased as Michael Bisping, who shouldn't have been nowhere near a microphone during that fight. I should be nowhere near a microphone. Even though he says I talk bollocks on Twitter, okay? I'm still picking the human highlight reel to get the job done. Now, co-main event, the old Chinese affair, okay? Yan Xiaonan challenging Zhang Wei Li for the strawweight title. Listen, fair play. This is a huge moment for Chinese MMA. To who would have thought we would have been here years ago? Two Chinese fighters, top of the game. Zhang Wei Li is just incredible. At 115, right? I don't think there's anyone that beats her. Yes, Rose Namajunas beat her twice, but Rose Namajunas has moved up to the flyweight division. And yes, Rose caught her with a head kick first time. Knocked her out, flushed to the mush. That was done. Shin on chin, right? She was no more. Um, and then the next time, it was a five-round back-and-forth affair. Now, Rose has moved on to the flyweight division because she wants to be great. She wants to be a two-weight division champion. But she did say, listen, fighting Zhang Weili, even though I won, I never want to experience that again. The pain that I had to endure, right? The, the, the areas that she had to dig to, they had to go to a dark place and dig really deep to be able to pull that off. That tells you, number one, Rose Namajunas, shout out to her. What a legend for being so honest. And number two, Zhang Wei Li is a bad person to be locked in an octagon with if you weigh 115 pounds and you are a female, okay? And I don't think anyone beats it, and I don't think it's going to be Yan Zhao Nan. Yan Zhao Nan has great power in her hands. She really does. Last time out against Jessica Andrade, caught a boom, snappy right as she was coming in. Beat Mackenzie Dern. She's had some tremendous wins, but I don't think she's the one. He's not. She is not the one to dethrone Zhang Wei Li. Okay, so there it is. And that brings us, of course, to the creme de la creme, the top of the bill. The main event of the historic UFC 300. Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill. I did a video on these. Who's the better fighter? Well, they're pretty much similar fighters. Both 6'4". Both got a similar reach. Both had one loss in the UFC. Both knockout artists. 
right? And they're both going to go out there and trade. I don't think either man is intimidated. Now, what is Shama be? Shama is like a. Oh, I mean, let's go. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sure. Hey, question. Hey, we'll I need you to sign something. Got everybody on the hey, card to we'll sign we'll it. Card to even though, even though, even though we're gonna go, we're gonna go to battle. We're gonna do our thing. I'm still a fan. I still respect you. I still appreciate you. Depending, you can get to sign the card. You can, you can lutar, but you respect the common fans. Could, could, if you wanted to, it's up to you. If you want to, you can do that. Let's see. Shama. Shama. Alex Pereira has had a far more glittering career. He's been a two-weight champion and he's holding the belt that belongs to Jamal Hill. And Jamal Hill is pissed. I will knock him out. He sees that as his. He sees Alex Pereira as a man that's walking around making a mockery of his accomplishments, okay? Jamal beat the coach of Alex Pereira, Glover Teixeira, okay? So you would think that Glover Teixeira is going to give him some inside scoop. Right, the only inside scoop you gotta know is that Jamal Hill is coming for the head of Alex Pereira. And I believe, let's cut to the chase, that Alex Pereira loses the belt on this one. It's gonna go down on the feet. Alex Pereira is a better striker, I said this yesterday, okay? But Jamal Hill isn't intimidated. He hits hard, I think he hits harder. I think he can take a better shot than most of uh, Alex's other opponents. And for that reason, I think Jamal Hill, within five rounds, is gonna drop Alex Pereira put him to sleep, get the knockout, and reclaim the light heavyweight championship of the world. Come at me in the comment section if you think I'm an absolute fool for saying so, but I'm telling you right now, Jamal Hill, that is my pick. Alex Pereira, could he prove me wrong? 100%, the man's phenomenal. But my pick, Jamal Hill via knockout. So there it is. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Enjoy the fights this weekend. More content coming your way. So stay tuned to the channel.